Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions. August 23rd, 2024, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 19, John chapter 9, Psalm 30, and 2 Chronicles 34. Yesterday we read the 19th chapter of uh, Revelation. And in verse 21 following, it talks about Babylon the Great falling. What, who is Babylon the Great? Okay. Babylon the Great stands for world government, world power, world authority, and governmental power, which is typically perverse, okay? I want to just read the 24th verse, the last verse. In her, that's Babylon, who falls and never gets back up, okay? Government, power, authority, and rule. In her was found the blood of the prophets and of God's holy people, of all who have been slaughtered on the earth. What's the point? The point is, Babylon, government power, authority, world power, world power stands in opposition to the people of God and the blood of Christ, okay? It just stands in opposition, always has, always will. They don't get along. And they typically want to kill the people of God. Don't be surprised when governments aren't grinning and gooing over your commitment to Christ. They won't. They despise it. Um, just don't be shocked when that, when that happens. It happens all the time. That's at the end of the 18th chapter, verse 24. Okay, important message. Let's pray. And you know what? I want you to pray for something for me. Uh, pray for... Uh, I, I just started a little over a month ago as minister of the Lindsay Christian Church, running 30 people way, way down. And we're going to work with God, and we're asking God to give us the plan to change that, to get it to grow, to reach people, to be impactful. And so we've been praying for uh, a few weeks, asking God to give us the right plans to get, to, to get it moving again. And um, so far, this is the plan that the Lord has uh, provided on the, night, on the 20th of October, I'm going to give it some time to pray about it and to uh, get it organized. 20th of October, we're going to kick off a class. There's no just one little Sunday school class, nothing for children or something or, or anything. I call it a table class. It's an idea I ran into 50 years ago, and I think, ah, you know what, let's try that here. What you do is you meet around tables and teach a lesson. I'll teach the lesson. And they'll meet around tables. I'll teach 25, 30 minute lesson. And then the people will have prayer and fellowship around the tables. The tables can get together for social activities other, other times. They become a fellowship unit, a place for people to meet and have friends. And it'll be, it'll be taught the Bible and uh, we'll have a leader for each table. And I'm praying for five tables and 30 people. That's, that, would, that, is, that would be profound, a transition. So please pray with me. I'll, I'll be talking about that and putting out prayer videos about it. Let's pray about that and ask God to speak to us. Father, use the, the, the uh, table class at Lindsay Christian Church. I pray that it would be absolutely transformational for the church. I pray that it would make a huge difference. Use it, Father. Give me wisdom as I figure out ways to implement it. Raise up the right people to help me lead it and to be table leaders. And I pray, Father, that you would use it in a big way. And I pray that you'd speak to us today as we look at your word. Change our lives by the truth that we find in your word. And I pray that you'd do that. Use my sermons to do that at Lindsay. And use, use them on this YouTube channel. And use your word to change lives, Father. Get it out there and change lives is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 19th chapter of Revelation. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are your judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged her blood. Uh, he has avenged her he has, he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah, the smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, you all you his servants, you who fear him, both small, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters 
and like loud peals of thunder shouting hallelujah for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh are... Uh, he has the name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's Jesus, folks. That's who it is. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty, the mighty of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all the people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their names gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured and with it the false prophets, the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who re had received the mark of the beast and worshiped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. John chapter 9, Gospel of John. Chapter 9. In my new Bible, which I will beat to death, which is what you're supposed to do with new Bibles. You know, that's how it works. But it's really wonderful right now. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born, born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground and made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. Now then, how then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed. Then I could see. Where is this man? They said, I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him, how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath, you know. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes that he, it was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he's a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. 
is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that you now, that, how is it now that he, how is, how is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how can he see now, or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was a terrible disgrace to be put out of the synagogue. Broke up your, your social life, too. That was why the parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time, they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know that this man is a sinner, talking about Jesus. And he never sinned, okay? <laughs> he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this, if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you, are steeped in, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out, threw him out of the synagogue. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man said, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you now. And the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Psalm 30. Psalm chapter 30. This is a psalm David wrote to dedicate the temple. Okay, I will exalt you, Lord, you... For you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made, me ro made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was disarmed, dismayed, excuse me. To you, Lord, I called to, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What is gained if a man is silenced? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing and removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. And then 2 Chronicles chapter 34. Josiah was eight years old when he became king. Can you imagine being eight years old and being a king? It's amazing. And he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and followed the ways of his father David, not turning aside to the right or to the left. In the eighth year of his reign, would have been 16 years old, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father David. In his tw 12th year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of high places, Asherah, poles, and idols. Under his direction, 
The altars of the Baals were torn down. He cut to pieces the incense altars uh, that were above them and smashed the Asherah poles and the idols. These he broke to pieces and scattered over the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars and so purged Judah and Jerusalem in the towns of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon as far as Naphtali and in the ruins around them. He tore down the altars and the Asherah poles and crushed the idols to powder and cut to pieces the incense altars throughout Israel. Then he went back to Jerusalem. <clears throat> in the 18th year of Josiah's reign to purify the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, son of Azaliah, and Maaseah, the ruler of the city, with Joah, son of Je Je uh, Joahaz, Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the temple of the Lord his, his God. They went to Hilkiah, the, the high priest, and gave him the money that had been brought into the temple of God, which the Levites, who were the gatekeepers, had collected from the people of Manasseh, Ephraim, and the entire remnant of Israel, and from all the people of Judah and Benjamin, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Then they entrusted it to the men appointed to supervise the work of the Lord's temple. These men paid, paid the workers who repaired and restored the temple. They also gave money to the carpenters and the builders to purchase dress, stone, and timber for joists and beams for the buildings that the king of Judah had allowed to fall into ruin. The workers labored faithfully over, over them to direct them where Jahath and Obadiah, Levites, descended from Merari and Zechariah and Meshulam, descended from Kohath. The Levites, all who were skilled in playing musical instruments, had charge of the laborers and supervised all the workers from job to job. Some of the Levites were secretaries, scribes, and gatekeepers. While they were bringing out the money that had been taken into the temple of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that had been given through Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. He gave it to Shaphan. Shaphan took the book to the king and reported to him. Your officials are doing everything that has been committed to them. They have paid out the money that was in the temple of the Lord and have entrusted it to supervisors and workers. Then Shaphan the secretary informed the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read from it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the law, he tore his robes. He gave these orders to Hilkiah, Ahakam son of Shaphan, Abdon son of Mekah, Shaphan the secretary, and Esaiah the king's attendant. Go and inquire of the Lord for me, for the remnant of Israel and Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that is poured out on us because those who have gone before us have not kept the word of the Lord. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written in this book. Hilkiah and those the king had sent with him went to speak to the prophet Huldah, who was the wife of Shalom, son of Tokhath, the son of Hez Hezra, keeper of the wardrobe. She lived in Jerusalem in the new quarter. She said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Tell the man who sent you to me. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. All the curses written in the book that has been read in the presence of the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all that their hands have made. My anger will be poured out on this place and will not be quenched. Tell the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord. This is what the Lord God of Israel says concerning the words you heard. Because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before God when you heard what he, what he spoke against this place and its people. And because you humbled yourself before me and tore your robes and wept in my presence, I have I've heard you, be, declares the Lord. Now I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place and all those who live here. So they took her answers back to the king. Then the king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord and the people of Judah the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, all the people from the least to the greatest. He read in their hearing the words of the book of the covenant, 
which had been found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by his pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and keep his commandments, statutes, decrees with all his heart and his soul and to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. Then he had everyone in Jerusalem and Benjamin pledge themselves to it. The people of Jerusalem did this in accordance with the covenant of God the God of their ancestors. Josiah removed all the detestable idols, idols from the territory belonging to the Israelites, and he had all who were present in Israel serve the Lord their God. As long as he lived, they did not fail to follow the Lord, the God of, of, their, of their ancestors. A lot of things stayed good as long as the people implemented and lived. Then they died and they faded quick. That's one of the things I've learned. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Change us, Father, by what we heard from you. Make, our, make us different is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.